Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, lecturer in computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short videos on problem solving techniques. In video number three we're going to take a look at cause and effect diagrams. So first of all, what is a cause and effect diagram? Well, it's generally regarded as a fishbone diagram that typically displays major generic categories such as people, methods, materials and equipment that cause an effect that's often perceived as a problem. It was first applied by uh, the picture of the guy here is Karo Ishikawa in 1950 and it can be used to systematically analyze cause and effect relationships and to identify potential root causes of a problem. And it's a good idea to use a diagram like this to display in increasing detail all of the possible causes related to a problem. So when do we use a cause and effect diagram? Well, it can be used to help identify the root causes of almost any problem that you can think of. This type of diagram is learned very easily by people and it's very useful in helping teams reach a shared understanding of a complicated problem. We can also use them to organize and analyze relationships between the causes of a problem. Basically, what it's very good at doing is something has gone wrong and we don't know what it is. And we're going to use our cause and effect diagram to help us try and figure out what is causing the problem. So how do we draw a cause and effect diagram? Well, on my diagram here, I've got a fishbone-like diagram with in the head, we state the problem statement, which is the effect. And we divided our diagram up into four main causes, so we identify those with the four large arrows. And within each main cause, we try and establish, at a second level, possible causes as to why, under each category, a main cause might be occurring. And for each cause, in turn, we ask, why is this cause happening? And we get, go down to third, and sometimes even fourth and fifth levels. Whatever you do, um, make sure that the diagram is visible to everybody. Put it up on a big whiteboard or use post-its or something like that on a wall. Don't overload the categories and don't go to too many levels because your diagram is going to get very complicated and very, very messy. Also, avoid vague statements such as possible lack of something or in terms of something. Make sure you avoid those. So here, for our purposes of this video, we have a simple cause and effect diagram starting point with machinery, people, materials and methods that cause a possible effect as we've mentioned before. If we need another category, we just simply add one in. So for example, we could add in money as a category here, um, or equipment or some other type of category. But for the moment, let's stick with these four. And the best way to illustrate how to use a cause and effect diagram is to go through an example. Suppose we have a pizza delivery company which is experiencing a lot of complaints from customers about late deliveries of pizzas on busy Friday and Saturday nights. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a diagram to identify all possible causes of this problem. So here we have a starting point. And this diagram here, by the way, is taken from a book, a small book called The Memory Jogger, Part 2. It's a pocket guide of tools for continuous improvement and effective planning, written by Michael Brassard and Diane Ritter, and published by Gold QPC in 1994. So we have our four main categories here, and I've spread the diagram out a little bit to make, the, make it a little bit more visible. And under the people category, I have identified two possible causes as to why uh, people might be causing late deliveries of pizzas, and these are that people don't show up, or that the drivers get lost. And then I'm going to do the same for the other three categories. So under machinery, I've got unreliable cars and ovens being too small. Um, under materials, I've got poor handling of large orders and poor dispatching. And finally, under methods, I've got run out of ingredients. There may well be others at this level, but stick to these ones here for the moment. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to concentrate on one arm of this diagram. I'm going to concentrate on the people category. And I've spread this out a little bit more and I've hidden the other parts of the diagram just to make this more visible on the video. And I've got my two possible main causes, drivers get lost and people don't show up, listed here. And what I want to do now is ask, why is each of those problems uh, caused? And what's causing, for example, people not to show up or what's causing drivers getting lost? So I fill that out and I start with people don't show up and I look at, for example, perhaps there's a high turnover of staff. And that might be a reason why people don't show up. Why is a high turnover of staff? Well, it could be because of low pay. And we fill out the rest of our diagram. Uh, also, another reason why people don't show up could be that there's no teamwork. And there may well be no teamwork because of no training. 
Under the drivers get lost category, you can see we have two possible main causes here. They don't know the town or they get wrong information. And each of those in turn has a possible cause. For example, they don't know the town. It could well be because of the high turnover in staff. So we put that down there. When we get the wrong information, it could well be because, uh, because it's being busy, their orders are being rushed. And because it's being rushed, poor training might well be a reason why people are not able to handle orders uh, in busy periods. So we can fill out our cause and effect diagram for each category like this. And when we've done that, uh, we could have a much fuller diagram like the one you see here, where we have spread out and looked at all the possible causes under the machinery, under methods, and under materials. And we can use a diagram like this to establish all possible causes of a particular problem. Now, it may well be that all these problems that are identified here may not actually be the reasons why we're late deliveries of pizzas on Fridays night are actually happening, but now we're in a position to investigate which one or which group of problems are, are, is there more than two or three problems here causing the problem and we can now investigate that we have a better understanding of what it is that we are looking for and hopefully we will be able to solve the problem of late delivery of pizzas or use a diagram like this to solve many problems that we face. You can learn more about cause and effect diagrams and other problem solving techniques in my new book, An Introduction to Business Systems Analysis, which is published by the Liffey Press and is available online in stores like Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. Um, all proceeds and all profits and royalties from the book will be donated to charity. The charity in this case is the National College of Ireland Foundation. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for your attention.